Hello friends, welcome to what I believe is the third episode of the Femininity Revolution podcast. I have recorded this episode so many times because I didn't like it when I reviewed it. Long story short, there were things I felt that I left out. And I also feel a little bit like an imposter talking about this topic. However, it is the category of questions that I got the most when I asked a couple weeks ago what you wanted to hear about on the Femininity Revolution podcast. And that is how to deal with body changes, navigating weight loss, postpartum, all that kind of thing, even from women who are much younger and not in the having kids phase, how to deal with body changes as a feminine woman and what I did and my tips. Like I just said, I feel like an imposter because I don't have the perfect body. I actually received a comment a couple days ago on my TikTok asking how I stay trim after having two kids. And to be honest, My body is not where I want it to be, and I don't think that I am the best example uh, to give tips on this topic. However, I did make a video on feminine health that included diet and fitness tips that I still recommend, and I made that last year while I was pregnant with baby number two that I'm going to link down below because last time I listened to it, just to check before I created this podcast episode, I still stand behind all of those things, even if they don't necessarily apply to every phase of my life. Those are things that I did that are tried and true and that I still incorporate in my life right now. So I did let there be a chunk of time between when I consumed that video and when I made this one because I want to stay real and honest. I don't want to cloud my judgment and I want to share what I'm doing right now. But yeah, not perfect, although many of you wanted to know, so In this podcast episode, I'm going to share with you currently my goals and just be really raw and honest with you about it. But before we dive into the episode, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Go over some things that I talked about in the past, just, you know, things to keep up to date and consistent because I've been getting questions. First of all, the first podcast episode, I mentioned that I was interested in creating some sort of a Patreon. I have another plan of what I'm going to do that is going to be extremely affordable and it is not for the purpose of extracting money out of this channel. This is a passion project that I believe should be accessible to all women because I have a message. It is simply for the purpose of creating a space where I can be more raw and authentic and it's going to make sense once I create this thing. But I am not in a rush to do that anymore because like I mentioned in the last video that I posted with homemaking motivation, I am getting a little bit burnt out when it comes to the internet, not creating content necessarily. I am very much enjoying creating content again now that I have my energy back and I am not pregnant and early postpartum, but I just feel, and I'll be 100% honest with you because this is the podcast, so annoyed when I open Instagram and it feels as though everybody is trying to sell something and I don't want to contribute to that. Like I said, I'm just trying to create an extremely affordable, cheap thing to create some of my more controversial content or like my more trad wifey content behind a wall, but I don't want to contribute to the space of like trying to sell something. I just feel like there's so much of that going on and it's not in alignment with my own personal values. I'm not saying anything bad about anybody on the internet. Love you all. We can agree to disagree on that kind of thing, but I just don't want to add into that. So I have to figure out the logistics of what I'm going to do to go about that. Putting that aside, the next thing I want to talk to you about is I've been considering going live. If you think that you would like to watch my live videos, I'm thinking perhaps of doing them on Fridays. There's a lot of things bouncing around in my head and I do feel kind of guilty for saying, you know, I'm going to do this and then not doing it. But again, going back to the concept of the fact that this is really a passion hobby project, 
and I'm a mother of two young kids and I just basically do this after they go to sleep or during their nap. Um, it is what it is, but I always appreciate your feedback on what you like to see because I equally get as much inspiration from you as I hope that you get from me. And my purpose on here truly is to elevate each other in being better traditional wives. So back to body changes and weight loss. I think that it's important to kind of talk about where it comes from and the reason why I got so many questions on this topic. And I believe that is because most of us grew up as like old Gen Z and young millennials that were very confused about the messaging we got when it came to our body. We grew up in like the slim fast and the old Weight Watchers generation. I have recommended Weight Watchers before and I'll get back to that but like the old Weight Watchers where you would step on a scale in front of everybody and like they had those like awful crackers that were supposed to emulate Oreos but they did not at all. They were just bad and (laughs) we were young girls or like early teenagers at this time consuming the content that also encouraged us to be extremely thin and in the 2000s when we became adults we were bombarded with like this message that went totally the other way of like accepting your body at all sizes and i do understand that people have different sizes body shapes you know i tend to carry more weight than other people and some people have very high metabolisms and are very thin but that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about like the not ability to knowledge when you're doing something unhealthy because that is shaming and we should be talking about what is healthy and like encouraging exercise and it's not necessarily about the way that you look Anyway, so we're all confused right now and we all don't know how to go about this. And particularly those women on my channel, you are all very motivated to look and feel your best, primarily for you, but also for your significant other, your husband. Many of you are traditional wives. And if you are somebody on this channel who's come here to say like, nobody should look good for another man you are probably in the wrong place because we like to look good for our husbands so that brings me to my first point talking about myself and what i have been doing to seek better balance coming from that generation of like the cultural message it's a little bit extreme in one direction and the message that i grew up with to be thin at all costs there used to be those crazy thin spo blogs that is extreme in the other direction is considering what my husband likes. I am almost sure 98% of you traditional wives, women who consume my content, women who are in masculine feminine relationships will be surprised that your husband does not expect perfection. Husbands are all different in what they find attractive. My husband actually likes that when i look not extremely thin so that gives me a little bit more leeway so number one is consider what your husband likes many men would rather have a feminine wife in attitude who isn't totally focused on 100 percent her appearance rather than somebody who looks very like supermodel body type of thing and is a little bit less preoccupied with the inside aspect of femininity it's all balanced but i highly recommend that you ask your husband it is a very narrow category of men who are like gym bros for example that would expect you to have a perfect body i have stretch marks um on you know, my chest as well as other parts of my body doesn't phase my husband at all. He still thinks that I'm attractive and that's what matters the most to me. That's number one priority. Second is of course your own personal goals. Well, I'm not saying that it's like second important, but second aspect that I'm going to focus on is personal goals. So for me, when I think about what is realistic, yes, I would love to look the same way that I looked when I did pageants, but that is not realistic for my lifestyle. And to be honest, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be counting calories, extremely restrictive. If you want to do that, that's okay. But I don't want to do that because I've done that in my life. I want to eat food that is tasty, made from 
scratch, that has definitely helped keep some weight off. And I enjoy the process of cooking. And of course, vanity, I want to fit into a certain size that is realistic for my lifestyle. Somebody who can't spend many hours at the gym because of my two little kids. Also have enough strength in my fitness routine to be able to keep up with my lifestyle because I did mention a couple weeks ago, I clock at least 10,000 steps just being a mom without exercise. And the third aspect that I consider when I go about body changes and weight loss and really loving and appreciating my body is focusing on things that help me feel more sensual and feminine. This is why I personally go for exercise that is like Pilates, walking, um, bar, ballet, bar exercises, even just like short workouts here and there that help give me more energy, like five, 10 minute behind exercises or a postpartum ab exercises, things that can be incorporated into my day that help me feel good, like I've accomplished something, give me that boost of energy, but aren't totally draining to my personal femininity. And I keep saying personal because I know many extremely feminine women, lots of them who are my friends, who enjoy high intensity workouts or they love the thrill of heavy weightlifting. So it doesn't make you less feminine to do those things. You just have to look at it in terms of your personality. For me, those are not things that I enjoy, but exercise is very important. I have body goals. I want to feel energetic. That helps with my femininity. So back to what I said, I go for things like Pilates. And of course, it's a balancing act because your body goals and what you want to achieve physically might be more intense than mine. And for that, you are going to need different types of exercises. There isn't just one way to do things. But regardless, you do have to incorporate exercise in your life. That is something that is going to help so much with your mood. It's going to make you a better person. And no matter what type of exercise you choose, it's going to help you exude more femininity. A couple practical tips that I want to suggest before I end this podcast, particularly those who are postpartum, I encourage you not to look into the mirror like to a crazy extent after you have your child because you should be focused on bonding with that baby first. And with time, things are going to change. Like your body shape is going to get back to an extent its original shape with time and that won't be six weeks postpartum for certain of you who are listening to this it took me at least nine months for my body to look like more so its original shape i still like i mentioned at the beginning of the podcast have imperfections but in general i could see myself in the mirror and my body shape around nine months postpartum so give yourself some grace. We talk about femininity on this channel. You also have to embody that encouraging, nurturing energy to yourself as well. Give yourself some time. Focus on motherhood. It's on your breastfeeding journey if that is something that is part of your postpartum. That's going to help you lose some weight. But also enjoy the stage that you are in and try not to worry. Leave your anxiety as much as possible and give your body time. So I'm going to end the podcast episode there. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on anything that I mentioned throughout the video. Leave your tips for other women. This community truly is an awesome place, especially in the comment section to help each other out. I'm sending you so much love. Bye-bye.